Hi, my name's Jack Bertwistle. I'm the Performance Manager with Vitality and the CS2 team here. Today we're here to talk about uh, the CARE project and the importance of mental health in esports. My background uh, is in mental performance, the sports psychology. What I focus on is, you know, when you look at performance as a whole, you've got your technical, your tactical, your physical, uh, but then there's this element of mental performance. And when you ask athletes, whether they're in rugby, in esports, you know, what percentage of your performance is mental? Everyone agrees that part of performance is mental, but no one can give you an answer. Some people say 90%, some people say 10, anywhere in between. But then when you ask, how do you train that 10% uh, or that 90%, whatever, whatever it is, most people don't have a clue. Some of the best athletes, we've got athletes here that already do a lot in this area without recognizing it. But what I do with the athletes is help them structure that the same way they might structure their movement or their aim, how they train and develop. Mental performance is all about, can you control your focus under pressure? So where we focus often determines how we think, how we feel and what actions we take. And if we, we can't always control our focus, but the more control we can, uh, we can have over that, the more control we can have over our behaviors on the field or on the server. I work with athletes on their, their mindset, how they see the world, how they see performance, um, I work with them on their mental skills. These are the skills and tools they use in performance, whether that's visualization, self-talk, uh, routine building. Um, and then I also work with athletes on their habits and routines outside the game, outside the server, to help build a, a well-rounded performance lifestyle that leads to consistent results um, in, in performance. You, you, know, you can understand that if your life outside of the server is inconsistent, you're probably going to find that your results on the server are inconsistent. The best example of the difference between mental health and mental performance is if you think about in a traditional sports sense an injury, you know, if you break your leg, the first thing you do is, you know, you see the doctor, you, you get the treatment you need right away to start the period of recovery. And then you'll work with a physio who will help you return back to your baseline level, you know, walking, running, jumping, the things you need to do to do your sport. Once you've got there, the strength and conditioning team will work with you to maximize your performance output to make you as fast as you can possibly be, to help you jump as high as you can be, the most coordinated you can be. So when we talk about mental health and mental performance, we need to have good mental health if we want to consistently perform in the game. But the difference is when I'm working with athletes, I'm not a mental health professional. I'm a mental performance professional. So when I work with athletes, I'm focused on how do we manage the pressure, the ups and downs, the stress of the game as well as possible to give us the best results. Whereas if someone's struggling with a genuine mental health condition, depression, anxiety, they would need to see a clinical mental health professional who can help them deal with that so that we can then build on top of that so they can now reach their potential. You will have seen and heard of athletes who have struggled with depression, uh, struggled with anxiety and still performed really well, but it's on a very shaky foundation and, and it's never an enjoyable um, or rewarding experience for those athletes. For long-term sustained performance, we want our athletes to have great mental well-being and mental health, and then I can help on top of that build out the skills and tools for them to realize their potential on the server or on the field. I've worked with athletes who had issues around uh, you know, stuff happening in their family, stress at, say, university if they're studying at the same time as they're playing, relationships, it's common, you know, athletes are young, uh, young people. Um, of course, on top of that, there's stuff that happens inside the professional environment. Uh, and Counter-Strike's no different to professional rugby or professional football. Results matter. If you're not getting results, the pressure starts to build. There's a lot of stress within the environment. Um, so it's, it's natural, you can't just work on mental performance because there's always going to be things that, um, that come across both domains. For me personally, it is stressful when you feel it as a, the coaches are the same, working in rugby, the physios, the strength and conditioning, the analysts, when the team's not performing, everybody feels the stress and we know that there are going to be changes and little things, you know, often a head coach changes but that means there's a whole new staff coming in. So there's a lot of things outside your control that you can't manage and you have to ride the ups and downs. So the industry we're in, whether it's 
traditional sport, e-sport, uh, it's incredibly demanding and it's incredibly stressful. It's part of the process, it just is what it is. Um, but hopefully, you know, we can take steps you know, in our CS2 team, but Vitality and the industry as a whole to make it a more safe and enjoyable experience for staff and athletes. Of course, um, eSports uh, has a strong online community following it, which means there's a lot of online interaction between the fans and the players. Um, it's surprisingly not, or maybe not surprisingly, not as well governed as the traditional media might be with other sports. So you, the players aren't necessarily treated with respect. You know, it's not to say that all fans are like that, but it, it only takes a few for, for those comments to come through. So it, it is a really ruthless environment. Like I was surprised by how um, challenging it can be. And then on top of that, for CS, we've got the travel circuit. That's demanding you're away from your family for long periods of the time. You don't get many second chances. You know, if you lose, you're out. We experienced that at Cato and it was, um, it, you know, it's ruthless. So initially I found, yeah, it is, it is tough out there. It's, you don't, it's not like rugby or football or basketball where you could got at games every week to try and find your groove. You need to perform every week um, to stay in the tournaments and to, to continue winning and succeeding. As an organisation, Vitality ultimately has the opportunity to create a really safe environment for players where we don't, as an org, need to pile on the pressure that's already there in a really ruthless industry. And my initial impressions is that um, Vitality is doing a great job of this. We've got the trust of um, organisational leadership and that helps everybody feel like they can express themselves, like they can be themselves, like they're not going to, um, there's not going to be severe consequences uh, if, you know, small blips happen and we're not going to win every tournament. Uh, we had a great year last year. I was lucky enough to see the last two events. And, you know, whilst it set expectations high and we want expectations to be high, we're not going to win every map or every match we play. And I think Vitality's done a really good job of making sure the players know that they believe in them, they trust in them, they're not playing under threat of um, being removed from the team. Now, of course, everyone understands it's a performance environment, so results do matter. Right? And there's no pretending that they don't. I think the role that Vitality can take, which is, which is doing a good job and is continu will continue to, to improve in this space, is to make sure that we're not adding unnecessary stress and pressure to the players. And it's not just for the benefit of the players' well-being. That will produce better results because the players will feel safer, more comfortable to be themselves. They'll feel less afraid of making mistakes. So it's Vitality, to me, in my early days here, is taking a really progressive and forward thinking approach, which is re I really enjoy working in, will continue to improve in terms of creating a, psycho a psychologically safe environment for, uh, for its players and staff. You know, most of us have been unfortunate enough to experience um, some form or some period of, of um, poor mental health. Um, but most importantly, you, you would be shocked to find out how many people don't know that you're struggling and care deeply and would do anything they can to help you um, through that time. So whilst it might feel very isolating and might feel very hopeless, um, opening up to a friend, you'll be blown away by the, the level of love and care and support and willingness to help that you'll get from people and it, it will change. Um, and the best thing you can do is ask for help and that will be the best way to bring you back to, to where you want to be. Um, and it's, it is hard, but it, it can be done. And, and if, you, if you ask for help, it, it will be done. Continue watching uh, this care project, uh, Vitality doing some great work in this space. Um, we're here for you, you're not alone. Um, if you need help, if you need support, uh, feel free to reach out, uh, whether it's to us or to a friend, um, and, and, and people will uh, are there for you and will do anything to help.